So welcome to our webinar today on how to make your website stand out in a crowded marketplace. I'm Hayley Barrett. I have a background in digital marketing and web design, and I'm currently a digital solutions advisor with Business Station here in the NT in Darwin. So today I'm going to take you through how to make your website stand out in a crowded marketplace. Uh, feel free to jump in at any time with any questions that you have. Uh, you'll notice if you're chimed in from your desktop uh, on your Zoom screen, there's a chat box down the bottom. If you just click onto that and ask any questions and I'll answer them as I go. So without further ado, I will dive into this and I'm going to share my screen with you now so you can follow along. Okay, one second. So one of the things with building a website, designing a website is everything you do with your website is not solely about your website. We need to approach online holistically. We need to consider our content uh, across the board. So we need to look at what happens offsite in social media, you know, search engines, that kind of thing. And also what happens on site. If we can get both of these elements working together, you know, we, it's much easier to, to stand out and to get, keep your customers engaged. So I want to talk a little bit about traditional marketing techniques or also known as advertising. So we're all familiar with, you know, the way that things used to be done, still done to a certain degree as well. Uh, so what we consider outbound marketing. So that's when we're telling people about us, about our business in a, a mass way. So that's, you know, TV commercials, radio ads, print ads, the, all the likes of that. So that's the traditional advertising, which still is relevant and still works to a degree in today's space. But um, as we know, you know, we have lots of different ways to communicate. So we want to make sure that we're able to, to reach our customers where they're engaging, where they're already using technology. And that's where these traditional forms don't quite enable that these days. So what we've done in the part over the past 10 or so years is come up with a new technique called inbound marketing. So this is basically, uh, it takes a more customer centric or buyer driven perspective. So what it means is we're looking at creating valuable content, not just on our website, but also through other means, as I said, social media, et cetera content marketing to be able to connect with our would-be customers. So that takes the form of, you know, things like content marketing, social media marketing, using the different tools that are out there, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, etc., cetera, uh, and creating content essentially that is transparent or educational or entertaining or and or relevant. So it's relevant to what your customer needs are. So we need to identify these with our ideal customer. This is before we even start. And if you have started social media marketing or your website, if you've already started online, you can still revisit these things now. You know, there's, it's never too late to get these things in place. So what are the key differences between inbound and outbound marketing? Basically, you can see here on screen, um, you know, what the differences are. And also I'm happy to share these slides with you if you would like them for your for future reference. But basically the difference between inbound and outbound is that inbound is, like I said before, the customer needs are at the center of everything that you do. It's always focusing on what their problems are and how you can solve them. We're outbound, again, as I said, it's very much about projecting your business service or products onto your customer through mass communication means. So that's the biggest difference between them. 
So how do you create content essentially? Whether we're talking social media or whether we're talking website, when I approach a, an online business, as I said, I like to look at it holistically. I never consider my website a standalone and I would never consider social media a standalone either. All of these things are integrated to work together as a machine that connects with your customers and engages them and creates brand loyalty essentially and keeps them coming back for more, for more content, for more information, for more to purchase more products, that kind of thing. So what I'm talking about right now is going to, we're going to look at create at basically setting a plan, a strategy that will work for you across both social media and website. And they both will work seamlessly to ensure that your brand is first getting noticed online and then secondly, able to stand out. That's the, the key driver here for us. So how do we make that happen? We need to firstly establish a workflow or there's no, multiple names for it. Another one would be considered a sales funnel or a marketing funnel, whatever you want to refer to it as, that's up to you. But basically the idea of this is we're going to define our goals and objectives. So if we start with the website in mind, you know, what's the main goal or the main objective, or there might be a number of objectives that we need to achieve in creating this website. And then working backwards from that, how are we going to get people to our website from what we're doing on social media uh, or even in SEO, that kind of thing. So we need to have a really clear understanding of that before we proceed any further. And what we're going to do is we're looking also at the different stages of the sales funnel. Um, and those are, well, there's, there can be multiple stages, but the three main ones are attracting and then engaging and then delighting. So when we are attracting customers, we're looking at creating valuable content that will draw our audience to our website through social media, through what we're doing on social media, uh, using things like, like video is really king at the moment. So using video, um, using, you know, really uh, standout imagery, great content, great like text, words, storytelling, that kind of thing. When we're in the engage stage, uh, what we're doing is we want to find a way that creates a lasting connection with our visitors. So we want to capture information about them. Uh, so generally, this is done through capturing an email address. You know, so we're providing valuable content in exchange for them signing up to receive that information, basically. When we have, when we're able to communicate one-on-one -on -one with our customer through email or phone, uh, it creates, it's a, it fosters a more nurtured relationship. So it's more likely for that customer to want to do business with us ongoing. And then the other stage is the delight stage. So this is where we're providing trusted information and relevant content to the right people, you know, creating that loyalty. Uh, and also as a result, enabling these customers to become brand advocates for us. So these are three different, the three different main stages of a sales funnel or a marketing funnel. And they're really important to remember. They again apply across what you're doing on social and what you're doing on website. You need to consider social and website as a continual sales funnel for your business. But each of our customer is going, each of our customers are going to come in at different stages in this sales funnel. So they're either not aware of our brand uh, and we need to educate them about who we are and how we benefit their business. And that's in the attraction phase. The second phase, as I said, is the engaged phase. And these customers or potential customers have some awareness of who we are or what we provide. So we're not needing to go through quite the educational phase in our content creation as we did with through in the attract stage. The delight stage, um, or also the conversion stage, at these people, 
they already know about us. They know why they love us. They know why they want to do business with us. They just need to have the product or service put in front of them in a way that delights them, essentially. We need to provide content to them that is interesting to their needs, that keeps them coming back for more. So the purpose of this is when people come to our business, they're always coming to us at a different stage in the sales funnel. It's either the attract, engage or delight. So we need to ensure that we've created content that talks to each of those different stages. So how do we do this? This is the big thing. How do we actually create content on our socials and on our website that talks to these customers at these different stages of the sales funnel? Firstly, we have to know our brand. Now, our brand is more than just your logo. Our brand is the whole identity of our business. And there's a lot that goes into creating a brand, really. If you haven't already done this, I urge you to take the time to consider how to do it. Um, we have multiple workshops and webinars on creating a brand. There's a lot, we also um, do your exercises on how to create your own brand as well. I can't tell you how many businesses I've worked with who have no idea what their brand is about, what, it rep what they represent, what image they're trying to portray. It's like your brand is like, you know, your own personal personality. And understanding this makes it so much easier for you to create content again on social media and on your website. So we need to start there. We need to have a really clear understanding of that. So there's lots of elements to consider in creating a brand, you know, um, having an idea of what your values are, those kind of things. But to keep it really simple, just a few things, having an understanding of your brand identity will be really helpful in um, setting up this website for you so it does stand out. So things to consider with your brand identity include things like your color scheme. So we've got your logo. Then we wanna know what colors you want to use to represent your business. So, you know, different colors represent or have different meanings. So you can start there looking at that. Uh, there's also a lot of different trending colors as well that you might want to use. It's all totally up to you, but how do you want your brand to be represented visually? This is really important. I don't know if you've ever looked at a YouTube video or an Instagram post or, you know, those brands or businesses that have a really clear understanding of this, the instant that you see uh, their posts come up, you have a really, you, you know straight away who it's from because they're really consistent with how they portray themselves through their colors, through the different fonts they use, through their f f um, imagery or their videography as well. Like it's, it's all very consistent. So this is, it's just pertinent that you get this right for your business. It will make such a big difference in making your business stand out online. It's that consistency of your brand throughout everything that you do. So your images and your videos, uh, videography is really important as well. And that's including, you know, whether you use different filters, different color schemes through your images, that kind of thing, different styling of your images, um, all of those things matter. The other thing that's really vital for your brand that is so often overlooked is getting the language or tone of voice right getting a good understanding of how you communicate with your people. Uh, so, you know, that could be super professional and formal, which I believe is a little bit outdated these days, thank God. Um, but, you know, we of course want to be portrayed professionally, but not super formal in the sense that we're disconnected from our audience. But that's, if you do decide that's how you want to communicate, that's up to you. Um, but, you know, having that understanding, so again, looking at different websites that you might be familiar with or different social media posts that you might see, you'll have a good feel of how you interact 
with different brands based on how they deliver their message. So some might be super casual, super fun, uh, super personal as well, sharing personal insights or stories, things like that. They're, this is all developing the tone and the messaging of your, of your brand. And this is so vital for your website. I'm using really strong words here, like pertinent and vital. It's not, um, it, it's not that severe. <laughs> I need to just tone that down a little bit. But basically, it, it does really allow you to, uh, to differentiate yourself by having that understanding of how you communicate with your customers and would-be customers. And that also allows your, these customers to connect with you through those different stages of the sales funnel easily as well. So they know when they come to your website. So let's say that you are you want to be personal and and casual as such, and a little bit of and a little bit fun. So you're going to attract customers who relate to that style, and they're going to be more. In, they're going to be more inclined to engage through your social media and then they'll be more inclined to engage through your website as well. But when you have this understanding, it makes it so much easier for you to create your content uh, because you're not trying to figure out, you know, what to write and how to write it and what tone of voice you should use. If we create these guidelines at the start, we can just write to that as we go. The other thing that is really uh, important to think about is the, the style of your business as well, of your brand. So when I talk about style, I'm talking about, you know, how do you want to be portrayed? Do you want to be, um, you know, like contemporary or a little bit more classical or a little bit more traditional or, you know, do you want to be mo modern and, and innovative, these kind of things, like what is your brand about? So a really good example, which I might just bring up now, is uh, look at the Apple website, for example. So you can see that they they take these, Apple are leading in technology, you know, Everything about their website, their social media, all their packaging, their whole brand represents this. So it's you know really sharp imagery, really simple layouts. Uh, it really portrays their brand so so concisely. Um, you can see there on their website how it's just really 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 simple. So consider these things for your brand as well. Is that how you want to be portrayed? Uh, if it was a little bit more, I'll bring up another example here, MailChimp, for example. You should all be familiar with these. Um, so you can see MailChimp, they're a, a they've taken that little bit more of a, a fun, quirky approach to their website. So their fonts, they're a little bit, we've still got a little, a little bit traditional, but a little bit off center as well. So it, it represents that quirkiness. They use colors like this bright pink and yellow and quirky images to represent that while they're all about business, they're quite, they take a quite fun approach to that. So that's what I mean when talking about considering the your style your personality, how you want to be portrayed through your website. And again, that carries through to your social media as well. So you'd ensure that if you were going to take, say, a similar approach to Apple, if you wanted to be like really simplistic, really contemporary, uh, your socials through whether it's images or video or even how you write, that will all represent that same style. So let's go across. Now what's the next stage? So once we have an idea of knowing what our brand is about, who we are, how we want to be portrayed, 
The next thing we need to understand is our buyer persona or our target audience. Now, this is something that, again, can be so over so typically overlooked and i think that's because a lot of people feel that you know they don't want to dis uh, they don't want to discard the potential of anyone being able to buy from them so what they do is try to attract everybody out in the marketplace and this isn't quite a successful way of uh, marketing yourself having an idea of who your customer is what their interests are what their the problems they have that your business can solve. Having this understanding, again, makes it really easy to target your content, everything that you create directly to that customer. So when you attract that customer, uh, it ends up having like a flow on effect to other people. So if we make sure that we talk every time we write something or make a video or do a social media post, if we keep this person in mind all the time and ensure that we're talking directly to them. Because this person is the person who is going to already have an interest in either our business or the products or services that our business serve, uh, provide. So we don't need to convince them that they need them. Uh, what we need to do is just show them that we have them and that we can deliver them well, what our point of difference is. So this is why it's so integral to have a really clear understanding of this. Um, so you're cutting through all the noise and you're talking directly to that person who is at a stage of, you know, willingness to go to the next step to purchase this product or service. Now, again, there's lots of exercises we can do on how you identify your target audience or your, you know, creating an avatar of your perfect customer. Uh, and there's lots of workshops around that as well. So I urge you to sit down and think about this as well. So we start with understanding our brand, getting really clear on that. And then we want to get really clear on who our ideal customer is. And once we've done that, we can then go into thinking about how we're going to create our content. And like I said earlier, creating content what we're talking about here applies to creating content for your website and for your social media as well it again is all integrated and we should consider it as from a holistic approach so the different types of content that there are uh, again for your whether it's for your website or social media we've got video imagery audio so audio through like podcasts or that's you know the main one or audiobooks or words so words being content like text blocks on our website words being a commentary in our social media posts even what we verbally speak as well so these are all different types of content that we can use and what we also need to consider when we're thinking about how we create content once we have that good understanding of who our buyer is or our uh, ideal customer, we wanna think about how that customer wants to get the required information. So what's their ideal way of being engaged with? Is it through blog posts? Is it through video? Is it through podcast? Is it through long form video in the, for, in the sense of, um, you know, YouTube? You know, do they like to watch informational, educational videos on YouTube? Do they like to be entertained? Do they like to be educated? Do they like to be for, informed? When we know this about our customer, again, it makes it so much easier to create content for them and to be able to stand out with that content. Uh, what are their pain points? So this, this is the biggest thing. When we're creating a business, uh, we often think that, okay, I've got this skill or I've got this idea and I'm going to create a business around it. But if we think about business in the sense of uh, what is the need in the marketplace and how can I solve that? So my customer, even if you know I'm a plumber, what pain points does my customer have that I can solve as a plumber? You know, to give an example of, of that it is, you know, um, maybe it's turning up on time, maybe it's uh, 
I'm just trying to think of experiences I've had with with tradespeople. Um, you know, turning up on time is a general one. So that could be a pain point that we can solve as a plumber. You know, we always turn up on time. So that can be represented in our in our content through our website, through our social medias. So we're, I've identified the number one problem that our customer has within our industry, and we've been able to solve that and represent that in what we post about on social and what we write about in, through our website. So think about for your industry, your type of business, what those pain points are and create content around that. And also we, going back to the sales funnel, we have to have a really good understanding of the customer journey. And so how people engage with our business through the attraction phase, through the engagement phase and through the delight phase and create content for each of those phases. Um, so we're generating content that is, it's dynamic content and it's um, talking to new, existing and repeat customers through the different stages of the life cycle. Okay, I've just had a, a message pop up. We've got a saxophone teacher just starting up or restarting up. Wow, that's uh, very cool, very different. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. What, so that's where I would ask the question. So as a saxophone teacher, uh, going back to those pain points, what, what are the pain points that your students would have? Uh, in the in your kind of industry, uh, I unfortunately don't know that industry well enough to come up with examples. But it might be, you know, the way that saxophone is taught. Perhaps you know, it might be you might be able to connect at the level that your students need to be, uh, uh, that your students are at. I guess so. Understanding those. Now, let me just share a little bit of stats for you here. Why what I'm talking about is important to know. Um, so this is taken from last year, this information. And basically what it's saying is, so last year, 77% of shoppers, um, I don't like the word shoppers, but 77% of shoppers spend more time researching online uh, than they did the year previously. So that's really interesting information uh, because it means that you know and I there has been a trend where um, online sales have gone up uh, but also so that's in e-commerce retail but also business to business as well so more service-based businesses um, you know people are spending more time researching those businesses online understanding who's out there we're no longer just talking to our direct like our local market um, we, well, perhaps if you're a saxophone teacher, you might be if you're doing in-person classes, but if you're doing online classes, uh, that could expand your reach beyond just your local market. So having our website, so it talks to the wider community beyond just who's in front of us, um, it's a really great opportunity basically to increase business. And it's showing that more people are spending time researching those businesses and are quite happy to engage businesses that aren't in their local marketplace. Um, and you can see here that the top three resources that inform customers about the solution that's available to them, uh, websites was the main one at 53%. So, Websites are playing a more and more crucial role in how people are choosing to do business. So having a website that is engaging, that is a really, really amazing representation of your business, of the service that you provide, it's as, just as important as having, you know, a, your shop fit out. If you had a bricks and mortar store, how you would have that designed, how you'd have that displayed, you need to, take that same approach to what to your website to how that looks 
So how do we do that? That's the question, isn't it? All right, so we've identified our brand. We've identified our customer and what their pain points are. So now what we need to consider is how, what that means for our website. And how do we put that together in a way that does exactly what we've been talking about, talking about engaging them and converting those customer, those visitors into customers and ongoing advocates for our business. So, like I said at the start, what are our main objectives? So this is for our whole online presence, but specifically for the website. What's the main objective of the website? So if we're uh, a retailer, you know, the main objective would be to sell products. And that's, that's quite simple. If we're a, a provider of services, our main objective is to be able to sell those services. So how do we achieve, how do we achieve that? Um, so that's the top layer. Uh, the top layer is sell the services or sell the product. Then we need to look at, okay, how do we create how, how do we make that happen? So underneath our goal being that, we need to create a, uh, an engaging way for people to connect with us through the website. So maybe our objective is we want to book, say if we're selling a service, so I'll use the saxophone business as an example. So thinking about how would people generally interact with us? Would they look at our website and go, yes, this is the saxophone teacher for me. I want to book in immediately. Is that how they would do it? Or would they go, I need a little bit more information. I want to talk to the saxophone teacher. So if we have an understanding of how our customers generally do business with us, we can create objectives on our website to align with that. So let's say that they do like to book a call with us Maybe that's the general way to do it. So then our objective on the website is to ensure that it's easy to book that call. So we might have set up um, a scheduling tool or something like that where people can book in for a 15 minute phone consult. Or we might want them to email us. Perhaps that's how we want to be communicated with. So we have it set up within the website. That's an objective that they can easily email us at any stage on the website. Or perhaps, uh, yeah, they would be the, the main ways, I suppose, that people would get in contact. So when I'm talking about goals and objectives, I'm talking about understanding the customer journey as well, or the user journey, and how typically, if you have, you know, if you've been in business for a while, you'd have a bit, bit of an understanding of how the, the life cycle of your customer and how they typically engage. But if you haven't, we need to, you know, get, we need to figure out how we want them to engage with us and then create those objectives around that. And if we're selling products, then our objective obviously is to sell those products, but then how do we get, how do we, what other objectives? Do we want to sell a bundle of products? Do we want to create um, ongoing customers? as well. So they buy one product, but then we want them to come back and, you know, continue purchasing through us. So how that's an objective and we set up our website to ensure that can happen. What problem are we solving? This is the main one. I always go back to what is the problem being solved. Uh, when we have this understanding with our website, we can write our content to, to that. So we're always solving the problem throughout the whole website, the customer can read our website and feel like whatever they've identified as their main problem or need, they feel safe that you can deliver on that, that you can solve that. This is uh, also just to state, this is really high level. When I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, we go into this in quite a lot of detail. So understanding the user journey, that thing, we actually, we have a map where we map this out. So if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one session, um, feel free to get in touch with me and I can actually go through this in a lot of detail relevant to your specific business. So understanding the user journey, again, that's just really important. So it's how do we get them from landing on the website 
to either contacting us or purchasing a product or becoming an ongoing customer. We want to understand that. And then we need to consider what the call to actions are as well. So by call to actions, I mean uh, buttons or links that tell people what they need to do to go to the next step. And I'm going to go through a couple of websites in a moment where I'll show you what all of these different things are. The other thing to remember with your website is that, and your social media as well, but it's about your customer, it's not about you. So again, you will see oftentimes businesses uh, with their websites, the, web, the website looks like an information brochure about the business. It's about, uh, you know, what our services are, who we are, where you can locate us. You know, it's all, it's quite, um, it's not very engaging. So to stand out, to really connect with your customer, the, your website needs to be about them. When they go to your website, they want to feel like their problem is being solved through your through what you're providing. We've got another question. Oh, okay, we've got a one on one booked in awesome. Should be good. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, okay, I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah, so creating content that's about your customer. And again, when I show you these websites, you'll see what I mean through that. Now, how do we design a website to achieve all of this, what I've been talking about? We need to visually prioritize key elements. So by that, I mean, and you can see it written there on the screen, I will talk directly to that right now. Um, but it's most the most important info or the key selling points are front and center and they demand attention. Um, and what we also do with designing a website is we're using we use color to organize. Um, obviously, the color needs to be in line with our brand identity, which we've already set up previously. Um, but it's a really great way for, for separating information as well. White space or you know, dark theme is quite popular at the moment as well. Um, so using white space or black space, if you want to call it that, to draw attention to important content. It's another key design factor. Uh, as I said in the previous slide, using those call to action buttons, which encourage your visitors to interact, encourage them to go to the next stage that you've defined through your user journey. Um, and we also need to remember people's natural scanning patterns. So by scanning patterns, what I mean is how does someone naturally read a website? And I'm going to take you to have a look at a couple of websites now where I'm going to show you exactly this. Before I show you those websites, uh, we better talk about what you want to say on your on on your website. I just jumped ahead of slide, so I'll come back to this one. Okay. So what kind of content? So we've talked about your brand identity, knowing your customer, um, how to visually lay out your website. But what do you say? What do you put on the website? If we're identifying pain points, how do we write content to those pain points? So main content that should go on a website are the product or service that you provide. And this needs to be identified instantly. So when I go to the website, I don't want to have to go three pages deep to know what service the, this business is providing. Quite simply, uh, our attention spans are so short these days because we have so much information coming at us through so many different means. Um, our attention spans are so short that we only have less than three seconds to engage our customers when they land on our website. So we need to consider site speed. That's a really big one. We want to make sure our site loads really quickly. It's so instantaneous. Um, 
but we also want to make sure that the moment they land on our website we've captured their attention so we want to put this is the service this is the product front and center so it's really easy to grasp once they've landed on the site that yes this is the site i need to be at and again i will show you how to do this in a really soft way so it's not you know confronting to your customer also what we want to put on our sites are the features and benefits the the features and benefits of your product or your service or not your product so well yeah your product but also why buying it from your business is better than buying it from another business uh, and a big uh, tool to achieving that is identifying your unique selling point which if we did a branding exercise we already identify this through that as well so your unique selling point or your point of difference um, whatever you want to call it so this is what makes you different to the same person next door that sells exactly the same product or service when we understand this again that makes it easier to connect with our customers um, you know and again a good example is Apple so and they've made they're really clear on their USP they're not just about um, you know selling computers they're selling lifestyles that's the difference and there's a really good video if you haven't already watched it um, by Simon Sinek S-I-N-E-K he talks about knowing your why your why is similar to your unique selling point uh, and he uses Apple as a really good example of how they've articulated their unique selling point to differentiate them now, not just between different computer providers, but different phone providers as well. So it's, um, and when you've identified that, people buy into that as opposed to, and that's why they do business with you, like the product itself or the service they could get from a hundred different people, but they start, they want to buy from you because your why or your unique selling point connects with them. The other thing that we want to include on our website is social proof. Now there's two reasons for this. Google search engine or any other search engine, uh, they prioritize social proof as a form of SEO. So it's not just about having keywords on your website. Uh, they look for connection with customers, how people interact with your business that, you know, that people are having great experiences with your business. So you'll see on Google itself, there's, you've got Google My Business, uh, which has a review section. So they really encourage you to, you know, get your customers to leave reviews through that. You can then add those to your website as well. All of these things are social proof. Uh, you know, if you're provide if you're in hospitality or tourism or something to that extent you could use the likes of TripAdvisor there's lots of different review sites out there for that are industry specific so utilizing those off-site but also having them on-site is um, a really big plus really big tick for Google um, but also it um, it expands on the whole concept of word of mouth you know, we talk a lot about, oh, my business relies on word of mouth. Social proof creates that word of mouth. So I can go on and say, well, you know, 10 people have said they've had amazing experiences with this business. They've told me why they love it. And uh, yeah, I want to do business with them too. So having that testimonials, reviews, et cetera, really important on your website. And the other thing, if you have it is to have your story. It doesn't have to be front or center, front and center, um, but telling people a little bit about you, especially um, for more, but like for smaller businesses, boutique businesses, I I believe strongly about this actually that this is a really really great way to differentiate yourself um, and to connect with your customers on that personal level. So including your story throughout your website, um, I think is a must. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of websites, e-commerce and um, more business to business. Before I do, does anyone have any questions? OK. 
Okay, I'll just bring up these websites. So let's look at Apple's website. Uh, they're a really good example because they're well known. So I want to go back to what I was talking about with these visualizing the key elements and I'll show you how they've done this through this site. So their newest product at the moment is the iPhone 13 Pro. So this is the first thing you see when you land on their website. And the way that the whole website's designed, as we've said, it's, you know, just screams innovation. It screams just sleek design. You know, I'm a bit of an iPhone fan and not paying me to say that, that I'd like a new iPhone if you're listening. Um, so I look at this and I just go, oh, like it just speaks to me, you know, just straight away. I connect with this brand. I love the simplicity of it. I love the design elements of the phone itself. I love how they've, uh, how they've designed the website around it. As I said, like, it's just that whole sleek, professional, innovative design that speaks to someone like me. So I'm just already engaged straight away and you can see, so the, the, there's so many different um, elements being used so well here. This is before we even scroll down the page. So the products front and center, it demands attention. Um, you can see how they've used a lot of white space, as I said, to draw attention to the important content. You can see how they've used language as well. So we've got the iPhone 13 Pro and then oh so Pro. Uh, so that's again, understanding who their buyer is who their ideal customer is. So speaking to that person, it's just, you know, then haven't used a lot of words at all, but it connects with that person immediately. You can see how they've used call to action buttons to encourage further interaction. So from here, and this is not just in uh, inviting further interaction, but inviting further interaction with people at those three different stages that we talked about. So we've got, the attract, engage and delight phase. So here I'm delighted because I am an ongoing customer. I, that's where I'm at in this stage. I'm delighted by the design. I know that I want to buy. So I just click the buy stage. I don't need any more information. They've won me over. If you are uncertain, you know, you're not sure if you want to upgrade your phone, you're not sure if you want to purchase an iPhone, you know, so you're still in that attract or engage phase. Um, you can easily learn more. And then you go on and it's still just, it's such beautiful design. Um, and as a designer, I get a little bit excited by that. So you can see in just this, before I even scroll any further down this website, how Apple has really has done so well, all of these things that we've spoken about. They've incorporated every element instantaneously. Then, you know, also they have other products that they sell as well. And they've laid this out beautifully, keeping the simplistic contemporary design, using simplistic language, but really speaking to their ideal customer all the way through the way that they've used their imagery, like the the images are so sharp, they're so crystal clear, they're so I'm getting a little bit carried away. I'll, I'll let you can see for yourself with Apple how they've captured that, and you can see further down um, we go here. I we can jump into any of their main products really, really easily. And then we get to the bottom and this is where the storytelling comes in. Okay. So after they've featured their products and I'm sure they've done work on this, I you know, have no idea, but I'm sure that they have where they've identified what their core products are and then their secondary products or which sell, uh, which sell the most and which maybe, you know, don't sell the, a lot of, or I'm sure they still sell a lot, but not as much as the main product. So they've laid this out in that way. 
That's how I see that. Identifying their customers, what they want, what they purchase the most of, what product is the most popular, that kind of thing. But then when we get to the bottom of the page, you can see we've got a little bit of storytelling here. So we've got Apple TV and this swagger, a story inspired by NBA star Kevin Durant. So this is where they incorporate storytelling. So it's not so much about them telling the story of their business, um, but embedding their business through the story of somebody else that's connected to their business or their brand. So that's how, that's one, a really good example of a website that's well designed that incorporates all of these elements. Understanding the user journey, that, that would be kept, you know, well top of mind and the website is designed around that. And then at the top using their navigation as well. If I want to jump into further information about specific products, um, it's well easily laid out through the navigation bar at the top as well. So that's a fantastic example of e-commerce. I just want to show you this more service. Well, it's not service, it's, um, it's business to business, this website. So we might all be familiar with Xero. Uh, it's a counting program. So again, you can see here, as soon as we land on the site, how they've incorporated all of these different things that we've talked about today. So understanding who our customer is and what their pain point is. The very first thing we see here is accounting software to do your to do. So um, Xero, they regularly, like Apple as well, they regular, regularly update their websites and they're regularly updating their content to reflect where their customers are at this given point in time. So they're always operating in real time. So they've identified that currently, well, this is what I read from this. I, again, don't actually know this. I'm not employed or um, don't receive commission from zero either. Um, but from reading this, I see that they've identified that their customer's main pain point at the moment is keeping up with their to-do list, their ever-growing ever list of things to do in their business. Uh, and I relate to that. And anyone who's in business probably relates to that as well, because you know, you're wearing a hundred hats. They said 17 hats, I think it's a hundred hats. You're doing a thousand different things at any given time. That to-do list, I don't know about yours, but mine never dwindles, it always grows. Add to that family and things like that. There's a lot going on in our day-to-day -day lives. So Zero has identified this and that's what they've put front and center. We've got accounting software that actually takes care of your to-do list. That's what they're saying. Um, you can see again how they've used color. So contrasting color in this case. So we've got the white bold text, we've got the blue background. Um, but then we break it up down further by using a lot of the white space to draw our attention to the different important content that we want to um, portray. Again, keeping their customer pain points in mind, you see this really well in this site. So as we go down, the, the very next thing we see is simplifying everyday business tasks. So they've recognized that this is a pain point that businesses have. Taking care of their books can be quite time consuming and you know difficult. If you're not numbers minded, it can be a bit difficult. So they've basically said, we just simplify that for you. So for anyone in business who already feels this way, identifies with this, it's, uh, you know, really, it's like, yeah, this is what I need. This is exactly what I need. So they're talking to people again in those three different phases, attract, engage, and delight. Um, you can see how they've, again, using their call to actions as well, depending on where you're at in your, uh, in that sales funnel. 
So, you know, if you're still in the very early stages, the attraction phase is still unsure if zero is for you, if you need an account, if you need accounting software, or if you need to convert from another accounting program to this one, you can learn a little bit more about what zero can do. If you're in that engaged stage, you know, they've got plans from $27 per month. So this is for those engaged people. It's like, okay, yeah, I think I want to go ahead with this. I can click into there and I can see which plans for me. If you're already sold, you know that you want it. Up the top here, we've got try zero for free. So it's like, let's just get started. So that's for that person who's already delighted by what zero does and is ready to jump in. So again, you can see how they've designed the website to talk to those people at those different stages all the time. When we go down further, this is for those who are still in that attract or engage state, not quite sure about zero or accounting software in the first place, or they're, they know they need accounting software, they just want to know why zero is for them. So they just answer those questions. We simplify those everyday tasks and you know, these are what they've probably identified is what businesses do on a day-to-day -day basis, the main uh, accounting needs that they have. They need to pay bills, they need to claim expenses, and, you know, bank connections is a really important part of what makes Zero such an amazing accounting program. So they've put that right in front of us, um, and we have the option to click further in if we're still unsure. And then we go down further, they talk a little bit about how, um, you know, they want to feature here that they're award-winning software, but you can see how they've used the language to connect with the customer. So using the words like CY0 has been rated number one for most satisfied customers. So it's talking about our customers love using zero. Find out why. We'll tell you more. And then we go down a little bit further. Um, so this is for those, the further we scroll down, the further we're getting into talking to those people who are at that attraction stage. So they're still not, they're still learning about, again, whether zero is for them or whether accounting software is for them. So we talk about how we, how zero is the online accounting program for your business, for the self-employed. So they've identified that's one of their main customers, the self-employed, but also one of their main customers as well is accountants and bookkeepers. So we've got, okay, if you need to know more information and you're a business owner, click here and we'll tell you some more, or you can try it for free and see if it's for you. If you're an accountant or bookkeeper and you're not sure if this is for you, Jump in here and we'll tell you some more information. And then it goes on. So the further we get down the screen, the more you can see that it's tailored towards those um, people that are in those early stages of the sales funnel. So they need more information. They're going to spend more time consuming on the site to get that information. And every one of these sections we, has a call to action that allows us to click for further information or to convert. So, you know, we've got here, explore what Zero can do. So I need more information or try Zero for free, you know, okay. Talking to those in the attraction stage of the funnel and talking to those at the conversion point of the funnel as well. So that is a very quick overview of um, making your website stand out online. I, if anyone's got any questions, let me know. So jump in with questions anytime if you'd like, but what I will do, we will finish uh, up now, but I just wanted to let you know if you're not already aware of uh, what Business Station offers. We're currently running the Digital Solutions Program, which gives you seven hours of uh, business advice and workshops for just $44.
So if you're interested, if you, you know, going online or need to enhance your online presence, this is a fantastic program. We've got a plethora of advisors, very experienced in the digital space, um, where we can talk about, you know, social media, uh, your website, e-commerce. We can even talk about security and business um, software and programs that can help streamline the productivity and efficiencies in your business as well. So that is a fantastic program. Yeah, if you want to register for that, you can just go to Business Station, to the Business Station website. So it's businessstation.com.au uh, and register. It's quite simple. Just fill out the form. Uh, we've got a question here. Okay, thank you. Kat said that it's, uh, I've covered it so well. That's awesome. Thanks, Kat. All right, so thank you for attending today. Uh, I, yeah, if you need any further information, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, um, for those of you who are live, I will just put my email in the chat box. So this is my business station email. Feel free to send an email with any questions you know, that are specific to your business, if you like. And that concludes our webinar on how to make your website stand out. I hope you got some value out of that, guys. Thanks, Kat, for letting me know that you did. Uh, until next time, I will see you later. Good luck with your online business.